But when I grew up, my dad was a tool maker. He worked. Yes, Keir, your dad was a tool maker. We all know already. Thanks for telling us. This evening was the Sky News leaders' debate between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer. I'm going to talk about it a little bit. This debate was a little bit different to the ITV debate from last week. They weren't uh, head to head, but this time they were in an interview situation first with Breath Rigby of Sky News, and then they were answering audience questions from Greensby. Let's see how they did. It's in the next parliament. No tax rises needed in the plans in our manifesto. In the plans. No, no tax rises for working people. That's income tax, national okay. insurance, so you're and VAT. not ruling out. Um, I, I just decode. I just decode that uh, for you guys, uh, because when a, pl a politician says uh, no plans, it does mean I might. Well, Great point there, Beth Rigby. Well, Beth, it I'm does. Not... I've done this a bit. It does. Look, I I'm not going to sit here tonight and write the next five years' worth of budgets, and you wouldn't take me seriously if I did. Just like the Conservative Party, Beth Rigby quizzed um, Keir Starmer firstly on tax and also on his support for Jeremy Corbyn previously. Obviously, one thing that the Tories keep talking about is tax and the Labour Party plans. Maybe they will put £2,000 more tax on you. Obviously, that number is debatable. Beth Rigby... Uh, picked up on this and asked him about it because so far they've only said that they won't raise VAT, income tax and uh, national insurance. But obviously there might be some other tax raises in there. Uh, he also mentioned capital's gains tax won't go up, but he did obviously mention that um, there will be the tax break being removed from the uh, private schools that will pay for new teachers. So he talked about those difficult decisions, but he doesn't want to raise taxes or put more burden on people. Two general elections, you asked people to elect Jeremy Corbyn as their prime minister. You said, I do think Jeremy Corbyn would make a great prime minister, Jeremy Corbyn. Did you mean that? I was certain that we would lose the 2019 election. That wasn't we were not my ready. question. I was certain that we would... I was certain that we would lose it. Um, I did campaign for Labour. Of course so I did. You, you... I will openly say I campaigned for Labour. I wanted good colleagues to be returned you into the Labour then, Party. When you said it. Uh, and I wanted a party that was capable of being changed so we could Sir face the Keir, future you, again. Did you not mean it when you said it? I was certain that we would lose. And That's I think many other people question. were certain that we would lose. So you didn't mean it? I was certain that we would lose. So you said it because you didn't think he would be Prime Minister well, anyway? Of course I campaigned for the Labour Party at the last election and the election before that and the one before that. I've always campaigned for the Labour Party and I'm glad I did because I wanted good colleagues to be returned to have their seats so that we could the, um, fight for the future of the Labour Party. I, I... Sir Keir Starmer there on Jeremy Corbyn. This is something he has to improve on is his answers because he probably should have said I changed my mind or something like that. But he didn't really answer the question straight. He gave a lot of sound bites and probably re-rehearsed lines, pretty much like any other politician nowadays. But I do think that's something he should improve on. He likes to go through a whole story before he reaches the end of his answer and gets to the point. I think it's something that um, leaves people thinking, come on, come on, get to it, get to it. But um, in all cases, I do think Keir Starmer did much better than the ITV debate. He had more time to talk, obviously, about his plans. And I think uh, he came across very confident, strong in his answers, and um, did really well. I think um, he comes out of that unscathed, really. Did he improve his position? Probably not. Did he make it worse? Probably not either. I think um, he's confident and he knows there's only three weeks to go until he's in Downing Street and the Prime Minister. Um, I definitely felt he did pretty well and handled everything really well. And that's no wonder why after the debate, YouGov called him the winner with 64% saying that he was the winner of this debate with 36% saying Sunak was the winner. Let's talk about our Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. You say that you're the one who can deliver stability after all the turmoil, but for many voters, the Conservatives are the turmoil. In this Parliament, we've had three Prime Ministers, five Chancellors, five Home Secretaries, six Health Secretaries. How do we know... How do we know that if you won the general election, you'd still be Prime Minister in a year's time? <laughs> 
Well, Beth, I don't think he's going to be the Prime Minister after the 4th of July anyway, so I don't think we really need to worry about that. But anyway, Rishi Sunak came into this debate with gaff after gaff, D-Day bunking, somebody else putting a bet on when the uh, date of the election was going to be called. Uh, there is uh, Tory chaos, even more Tory chaos, reform going up in the polls. He looked a completely defeated man. He looked like he wanted to say, help, get me out of here. Help me get to California. Why are you moving your party so far away from younger voters when it's the key demographic that will be our future? Yeah. Honestly speaking, I thought uh, Beth Rigby gave Sunak a free pass. She didn't really ask any really difficult questions and didn't really give him a hard time compared to Keir Starmer. But the audience gave him a completely hard time because the question after question was uh, terrible for Sunak and he just looks completely down, I think. You can see in the answer there, or the non-answer there to that boy, he looked obviously like a frustrated Tory. He looked uh, probably like that because, yeah, the Tories are moving away from the young, trying to protect the old with their triple log plus, make the young people join the army with national service. They are the party of the old nowadays. And uh, Rishi Sunak is uh, done. Uh, there was someone also who asked the question who used to be a chairperson for the local Tory party or something, and she won't even vote Tory because she's ashamed. She's just ashamed of him missing the D-Day event. She's ashamed that they were partying in Downing Street while the Queen was at the funeral of uh, Prince Philip, her husband. She was done. There was another dad in there saying how he's wrecked his daughter's future because she can't afford to buy a house. There was somebody else as well talking about the NHS and um, the damage the Brexit did to the NHS because people left. And then they were totally unprepared for uh, COVID. The Tories have smashed the country and um, smashed it to pieces practically. And the uh, audience in the uh, this debate gave Sunak a hard time. I did feel sorry for him a little bit, but it's only three weeks left, Rishi. Don't worry about it. I don't think he's coming back from this. It, it's over, I think. Um, it's done. Uh, as long as Labour don't do anything stupid and they're playing a very defensive game at the moment, they're in Downing Street for definite. Uh, it's, it is pretty much over unless something happens. But Sunak didn't really do very well in this debate. He looked like a he looked like a lost baby. He, he looked like it was done. And uh, he knows it's done, I think. I think he just wants it to stop now and um, wants it to end. And, um, yeah, I think it's going to be over soon. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Did you watch this debate? Who did you think won? Were you persuaded by either one or did you think both uh, were pretty robotic?